And Henry, tell us why we should even care about a company that has no real vehicle that comes into 2022, makes no money whatsoever, and frankly, a lot of people say is air. Hey, uh, good morning. Uh, good to see you again. You know, the reason uh, I think this is uh, so exciting is because, you know, the EV market is developing. Uh, there's only less than 2 million EVs sold globally, but the total market is 80 million. Now, we are seeing a slow uptake right now, but in 22, 23 is when it's going to explode, when you're really going to see the EV market coming together and, and accelerate. And because of that, we are obviously out now starting uh, developing a vehicle. It takes two, three years to develop a vehicle. So it's really a matter of whether somebody wants to come in along for the ride from the beginning with us. And I think a lot of, of people do. And we are obviously being very transparent about what we are doing. We have milestones. We have our first milestones already on the 15th of November. Uh, we have already built uh, prototypes of the vehicle and we'll show our final vehicle already next year in May at the Los Angeles Auto Show. So I think it's a very exciting time, and we are kind of the fifth company, car company in America that's public, uh, you know, after Tesla. So there's really only two electric car companies here in the U.S. that are public, which is, I think, pretty exciting. All right, so what do you really get if you buy? Who is uh, building beautiful cars that are then outsourced to, to uh, Magna? Do we get a, a concept company that is basically uh, going to make us love something that may or may not come in 2022? What do we get with Fisker, or do we just get you? Well, no, of course not. We have hired a, an amazing team. I think you should look at us a little bit more like Apple and Foxconn. You know, Apple don't make their own phones, but they have a great operating system. Uh, they got a great phone and software design. And, and that's what we are focusing on. We are really focusing on creating the future of a car company. We are a digital car company, meaning we do everything via our app or via our website. So it's a whole new consumer experience. We're asset light because I don't need to prove uh, that I can make a car better than Toyota. That's why we are together with Magna which is the third, uh, world's, third world's largest supplier. And, you know, they know how to build cars. They build, uh, you know, Mercedes, BMW, Toyotas, and they will build as a high-quality car. You know how difficult it is. You have seen it, how difficult it is to get a car into production. And why should we go through all this pain if we can get in a car into production, end of 22, high-quality, ramp up to 50,000 vehicles the first year and be cash flow positive? That's a totally different business model than anybody else have out there. Mr. Fisker, I can understand why you'd want to compare yourself to Tesla, but others out there may see some comparisons to Nikola, which, of course, is uh, uh, more focused on trucks and hydrogen stations, but did come public through a SPAC, has a charismatic or had a charismatic leader. He's no longer leading the company. Um, you know, what do you say to those who say, as Jim indicated, you're nothing more than a plan at this point, and you've been around for a while. It's not as though Fisker Automotive... You were founded in, what, 2000? Had the hybrid Fisker Karma, which didn't work at that point. What do you say to those who, well, just wonder, basically, whether you are going to be another Nikola? Well, first of all, Nikola, I think, is making trucks, as you said. And secondly, we have already built drivable prototypes that we have shown. We have uh, done an amazing deal with Magna, which now uh, will take a 6% stake in Fisker. Uh, you know, and they produce, they've produced already millions of vehicles. So I think we have a completely different business model here. Uh, we are concentrating on software, on design, on the customer experience. And that's really what the difference here is. Now, obviously, it takes two to three years to make a car. And this is just reality. And, and you can't make it any quicker than that because you've got to go through all kind of certification, engineering, long lead tooling. And, and the interesting thing with us is that we have gone out and raised a billion dollars, which is more than enough to get the Fisker Ocean to production so we are not like the other startup companies that need to go out and do multiple rounds before they can get a vehicle into production. So far, we have hit all our milestones. Yes, uh, I launched the Fisker Karma back in 2011, about one and a half year before the Model S came out from Tesla. So those were the early days with you know battery systems that had issues, et cetera. Today, we are looking at a new type of world where you've got giant battery companies with proven battery technology that, by the way, everybody's using, including Tesla. You know, they're using Panasonic. We are using from some of the other ones, and all the cells are pretty similar. So I think the fight in the future is going to be about affordability, creating a great product and a great customer experience. And that's really the key here, a different customer experience. We have a flexible lease where you can give back the car anytime. 
So I think we're, we're going to set some whole new trend here with our company. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.